Franny and welcome to my book blog. Today I am blogging about the latest book by Helen Huang, The Heart Principle. All right, before we get started, please make sure you like and subscribe. Party started. I hope you guys are having an amazing holiday season and getting some reading in. I have a goodie for you today, so let's get this started. All right, so this is the third book from Helen Huang's Kiss Potion series. This book, you can read it as part of the series in order, or you can read it as a standalone. Um, and the most anticipated book of the year. She, Helen Huang did such a great job with the first and second book of the series that I had this book on my reading list as soon as she announced that she was coming out with the third book for the series. So uh, that should give you an idea. Finally got my hands on it um, and had time to read it. Uh, so I will say that there is some cursing and there is sex. So if this is, if you're a younger audience, this is not the book for you. Um, so the main character is Anna Sun. She's a violinist and um, Quan. And so if you guys remember, Quan is Michael's cousin and Kai's brother, okay? From, uh, he's, he was mentioned in the first and second book of the series, so it was definitely time for Quan, for Quan to have his own love story. And so this kind of works out perfectly. Anna is constantly wearing a mask around her family, and she never feels that she can be herself or show who she her true self around her family. She has to be the yes, absolutely, I can do it. Even if she can't, she has to say yes, because she doesn't want her family to be disappointed in her. Um, and so she always has to put on this mask when she's with them. And then when she's not with them, she can be herself. Anna just wants to make sure that everyone likes her because she doesn't really fit in. In the beginning of the story, Anna's in therapy and um, she has a longtime boyfriend, Julian. And Julian decides, hey, before I make a commitment to you, I want an open relationship. An open relationship? Like, who would jump and agree to that? Especially if it's not something that they've had a conversation about before. So, Julian decides he wants an open relationship before he has a commitment with her. Anna is completely lost as a result of this. She doesn't know what to do, what to think, or how to feel. And so at this point, she's like, okay, have your open relationship. It's not like she had a choice. That's what Julian wanted to do, so she was going to allow him to do it. Um, and so she decides, okay, I'm going to set up an online profile and have a one-night stand. And she literally sets up this one-night stand profile, like, So now there's Quan. Quan has just had um, recovered from cancer. He had major surgery and he's self-conscious. He's not sure if he can still, if he's still a man, if he's still the person that he was before where he didn't have trouble getting ladies. And so now he's going through the process of, of being, trying to find confidence in himself. Quan come into the picture. So how does Quan meet Anna? Quan sees Anna's ad online and decides, hey, this is interesting. Let's just try it out. He pulls up. Quan has tattoos. He's driving a motorcycle. Anna is more from like an upper class family. And so they're complete opposites. So when she, he pulls up, you would think she would run Guys, you have to read the story. Um, but so much happens in the story that really builds their relationship. And she finally feels like she can be herself. They really connect over documentaries. Octopus, guys. Octopus. Octopi. 
documentaries. It's so cute. I'm trying not to ruin this book for you guys and give you too many spoilers, but it's it's adorable. So you guys have to read it. They truly connect over documentaries. Do they eventually have this one night stand? You have to read it to find out, you guys. Anna, throughout the story, Anna's going through a lot of things. She's going through therapy. And the therapist tells her that she's in the autistic spectrum. Guys, this is huge. She's a grown woman. She lives on her own. She's living life. She's lived her entire childhood and finds out as an adult that she's on the autistic spectrum. So she's, this book, she's in this story, she's going through a lot of different emotions. Um, she's frustrated. She finally figures out why she does not fit in and why she's different. And now there's a name for it. And now it makes sense. So it's scary. It's frustrating. There's a lot of emotions going on right now because she finally understands or this actually, she finally has the key to understand herself. Um, the therapist gives her a lot of information about um, autism and it just, just right on the butt. Like, she's like, that's me. That that's me. Anna did eventually have a burnout. She just a complete breakdown, guys. It is just the breakdown that finally happens. Happens. Like the breakdown makes you say, why did you allow yourself to get to that point? And we all do it. We all Keep pushing and keep pushing and keep pushing because we think that we can do it until you're just completely burned out. And the burnout happened, guys. Anna becomes a caregiver. Her father becomes very ill. Um, and she's still going through a lot. She's just found out she's autistic. Um, and she's having this block. She's burnt out. And now she's a caregiver for her father. Um, and as anyone that has taken care of a, a loved one before knows that that can be very draining. Sometimes you can forget yourself and forget how to take care of yourself. And Anna's like, how can I take care of someone? And I don't even know how to take care of myself. The caregiver, she's told by her family that she's going to be a caregiver. Her sister Priscilla told her she's going to be a caregiver. So this, this part of the story is just it's heart-wrenching. Quan is so supportive of Anna that the entire time that she's caring for her father and he's like, hey, you know, take some time for yourself. He's so supportive of her and I love that about her. Anna's family sees Quan and they're like, he has tattoos. He's, Priscilla obviously thinks, oh, he's just a fling until Julian is ready. And then once Julian is ready, then Quan is out of the picture. So she doesn't have to worry about Quan anymore. Um, so it's just a fling. And they brush him off. And it's to the point that the sister, Priscilla, is like, oh, he probably just sells t-shirts from his trunk. When her family, her sister finds out that Anna is autistic, Guys, the way that her system responds is heartbreaking. I was shocked when I read that part. I'm not going to go on full details because I'm trying not to spoil the book for you, but I do want you to know that part just broke me into pieces. How? How do you treat someone that you say you love that way? when they're trying to explain something to you. Guys, you just have to read it. That's not what I'm going to say. And the fact that Anna was the yes person is even more reason why Julian was with her, in my opinion. She always said yes and never said no. And so it was, Julian didn't know her. Julian didn't know what she was going through, 
who she was. She had a mask on when she was with Julian. So can you imagine being married to someone for the rest of your life and always having to wear a mask from the minute you wake up to the last second of the day? That's draining. And so you want to be with someone where you find joy, like you laugh and you can cry and you can be honest. And that's not what she had with Julian. And, and so, as you can tell, I didn't like Julian. It's okay. I'm not going to like every character. I didn't like Julian. Julian was self-centered. Julian only wanted Anna because she gave him what he wanted when he wanted it. And so he didn't care about how he affected her. He made plans and just told her, hey, this is what we're doing. We're going to get burgers. Maybe I don't want burgers. I want fries. Or no, maybe I don't want burgers. I want pizza. And we have a conversation. So Julian was, and he didn't fight for her. And that's how, you know, the love was not real. Julian was just in it for himself um, and his Anna's family and Julian's family loved each other um, Anna's Julian's mom wanted uh, Julian to marry Anna because pretty much the fact that she was such a caregiver great caregiver to her father that um, she was hoping that Anna would do the same for her that's the impression she gives it to him his way well, uh, I would want someone like that too. But that's not the real world. The real world, find someone who's different, um, who has their own opinion. That's not what Julian's looking for. And the Anna that always wore her mask, she was exactly the person that Julian needed. How many women would say, hey, you want an open relationship? Go ahead and stay there waiting. I'll wait for the answer to that. Both characters are dealing with their issues. Anna is still figuring out herself as an adult. And Quan is figuring out his identity. There's stuff going on that, you know, the fact that he had surgery. And then stuff with work that's now like making him doubt himself which is normal. It's what we experience in real life. So that makes this book even more amazing because the both characters are dealing with issues and they're trying to just make it. And, and the best part is they find each other in the process. Oh, I love a good romance. Kwan is still an amazing guy um, and throughout the story he continues to show how amazing he is. I loved him in the first and second book of this series but I completely fell in love with him again in this third um, book. So um, Helen Huang did an amazing job of uh, keeping Kwan's character making him so lovable. A sad book because Anna is going through a lot. She is burned out. To the point that she's having a block, like she can't perform. Like she plays her violin in a loop over and over and over. And that's if she picks up her violin. So I can relate to both characters um, in a sense where you're trying to find your identity. So you can relate there, even if you're not in the autistic spectrum. When you're at the point where you, when you're always saying yes to a family member, out to family members or there's that one family member that you can never say no to and they just push your button i can relate to that um i can relate to uh um kwan we all can relate where you have health issues and or you have something that's affected your self-esteem and things going on at work maybe the story ended just a little too soon i wish ellen had added just another chapter just to all right, you guys, I hope you enjoyed today's book review. This is an amazing book by Helen Wong, so I do recommend that you go read it. Uh, if you're reading it right now, tell me your thoughts. Leave it in the comments below. If you have any additional questions, please don't hesitate to ask. 
I look forward to reading this book again, but I think I'm going to read it in order, the entire series together. So that should be good. What do you have on your reading list, to-do list? What books do you have next? I have quite a few books, but I'm not sure what I'm going to read next. Um, but I would love some suggestions. Let me know your thoughts. I hope you guys have an amazing 2021 holiday season and a fantastic 2022. All right, enjoy. Happy holidays. Bye.